What is going on everybody? This is gonna be one of those brief kind of off the cuff videos addressing a question I've gotten very often over the past few months. Excellently and recently I've seen this question come up so often that made me prompt me to make this one. And that is people see that I obviously love the Total Gym or a Sony Bench Trainer. In this case, I'm sitting on a Great Flex. Uh, they also know in past months, I really fallen in love with the X3, made tons of videos, why explaining why I like this, but just other similar setups. They have a bar, some resistance bands and a foot plate. And so people say I'm kind of on the fence choosing one versus another for various reasons. And what would you recommend? By default, you might think I have a bias because obviously the focus in this channel where I primarily talk about are total gyms and Saudi men's trainers. But I would never say that really, even with these machines, that everybody should pick up one of these. I think with any tool or device, you got to consider your own individual interests, your goals, your needs and ultimately the one that you're most likely to use in the long run. Now, I don't wanna rehash all the general pros and cons about each of these devices. I got tons of videos talking about why I like these machines and various pros and cons of each. I just wanna give you guys some general thoughts that might help you guys make a decision. I think the best answer right away up front would be just get both of them. Given the market we're in, maybe you can find a cheap or used Slotty men's trainer, I know some people just like buying stuff new, so let me make go without saying, you might just wanna get like a new piece of equipment or you just got a certain budget you're working with, or I should say maybe you got like some sort of space confines you're working with as well. But just starting off with the X3, I think the to me the real selling point, I just made a whole video of why I like this particular system, but certainly just using resistance bands and a bar and a foot plate, I'll just say that too. Uh, why I kind of like this kind of very simplistic setup is because it is simplistic and so efficient. You're limited on versatility, of course, on various exercises. So if you're somebody who likes doing a bunch of different stuff, experimenting with other stuff, or there's a potential that you might get bored doing just using one particular mode or modality, then I would say this might not, you know, maybe the, maybe the best option for you. But if you are someone who's maybe has limited space, uh, you like the portability of it, and you like the efficiency in the sense that you're just picking from a few exercises, a little more than a few, but you're picking from some key exercises that work, you know, one to two exercises per body part that are really efficient in the sense that they're some of the best exercises I kind of go to even with all the stuff I have here, you know, as far as like arms, chest, back, honestly, almost every exercise, uh, you can find one exercise in here that is just one of the best in like my top five of each body part. So that in a sense, as far as efficiency works, and if you're following the X3 system on their one exercise, uh, per, per one set to failure type myth system, you can't argue with that. Now, of course you might be I can hear, already hear the pushback on the comment section. Some people don't believe in that system. You should be doing more of that. I'm just gonna say, if you wanna follow their simplistic system and a simplistic program, uh, that's certainly a benefit for this as well. But a sliding men's trainer like this Great Flex I'm sitting on definitely has more of a learning curve. Not on everything, but on some exercises really make the most out of it, especially when I'm making the case that what really is awesome about these machines is because they are so versatile. So if I had to pick one versus another, say for life, like I just want to pick one, you had to put a gun to my head and say, you're only picking one of these machines for the rest of your life. It would have to be a Sony Men's Trainer just out of default for all the exercises and creative ways I can use this machine. But based on your state in life and maybe your general ability, maybe you can't even maximize that many exercises. So already right there, that might be kind of a, a negative factor for a total gym or a Sony Men's Trainer. It's also obviously much bigger, so this takes up some space. So if you want something that's small and compact, there's really zero excuse of actually fitting this into your workout schedule. If you're traveling, if you're in your, in your office, you could squeeze in a quick, efficient, good workout with something like this. You'll probably see a clip or two in this video, but even in past videos, if you watch how I maximize this machine, the great thing, what I do love about a Saudi Men's Trainer is it's very complimentary to other tools that you might have in the gym. You can continuously never get bored in this thing because anytime you get a new toy, like I got that uh, total body bar, I've been messing around with this on here, uh, you can just find new exercises and more creative ways to maximize using this machine. Granted, many of the things I do, I always say, do at your own risk. You're seeing me kind of rig a setup here with my Max Pro. I was trying some stuff. So creativity really is the limit as far as the number of exercises and things you guys can do on these things. The Total Gym definitely has some obvious weak points though when you compare it to a X3. One most noticeably is the type of stimulus. Given that you're using very heavy variable resistance and the fact you can do so with a strong bar like this, I think you guys might see a clip of me doing some deadlifts. The knurling is so solid, it can handle such heavy weight, even this elite bar or least band, whatever, um, that I can really stress and tax my legs, not to mention with the new added like X3 bar thing, uh, that this is, but on paper, no question, this thing is much better. The X3 is much better for training the legs on a total gym. 
I can still do with the total gym. It just takes a lot more repetitions, a lot more sets to kind of get that same kind of work or volume in or stress of the muscles. Granted, I like with the great flex, I can add some vertebral resistance and you can change up resistance type settings. Uh, but someone asked me this question recently about this, like the majority of concentric only exercises that you find a lot in a total gym, in the sense that you get some of that ne negative on some exercises, but depending on the stress and the angle you're at, a lot of work is really done in that concentric. And so I would just say in general, there isn't a whole lot of stress to the muscles, depending on the person that you might do a lot more work on this machine. And so with the next three, you get a lot more bang for your buck in the time period you're working with, especially, like I said, in certain exercises. Uh, that'll lead me to kind of my final recommendations. I know a lot of people have issues with like joint issues, especially in the lower back, uh, maybe even the hips or legs or something like that, I should say knees. And so while this thing definitely is much better for working your lower extremity, the X3 is, uh, for people that have like bad back issues, I have heard before, just given that the variable resistance tension, that that can put, put undue necessary stress, say in your back. So things like deadlifts, even some of the key leg exercises, might aggravate you versus a total gym or Saudi men's trainer is extremely forgiving to the back. There's so many things you can do upper body wise or even at this incline, especially even using like the foot plate here or just the squat stand, I can do a lot of exercises that really takes a lot of stress off your lower body. So I hear that across the board all the time, people have big joint issues or back issues. One of the biggest things I hear is that one of the total gym or Saudi men's trainer, like a great flex is one of the, one of, if not the best resistance training modes of exercise that really works for most people. Not to say you couldn't do that with this thing. I'm just saying to get the most out of this bar, if you got kind of weak back or issues that may, might potentially cause some problems. And while both actually argue that their mode of exercise is pretty easy on the joints, I would say personally, the Saudi men's trainer is much easier on the joints, but you also could say there's a lot lower intensity on these machines as well. Those are my primary thoughts. I don't know if that really helps you guys out as much as it did, I don't know. Uh, these are just the things that kind of come to mind, the big factors I'd recommend to most people if you're considering one versus another. Like I said, uh, you can get a cheap, inexpensive, or used Saudi men's trainer, and then certainly uh, swap out the wheels or the cables and make them brand new. Randy at Huck Products, I got no affiliation, but he's awesome to do that. And these types of setups, you can rig a cheap setup if you guys want to. The point is, I would try and maximize both if you guys can do it. But if it's a matter of space and just overall budget, hopefully this video helps you out. Also, what helps me out though, is if you guys are considering picking one of these up, shameless plug, I have links and promo codes down below uh, for a great flex and also a X3. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next video.